everyone. So you've done a little bit of work with the mean now, and we're going to talk about the median and the mode of a set of data now. So remember that the mean is the average, so adding up all your data values, so we can do it for this one, five plus two is seven, plus one is eight, plus six is 14, plus one is 15. All right, so 15 is the total, when we add up all our data values, that's the sum of our data values. And then we know we have to divide by the number of data values. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And the mean is three. Okay, so we remember that mean is average. Okay, and all of these should, be, should work out to about the same. So now we'll talk about the median. Now to find the median of a set of data, there's something you have to do first. And that is put your data values in order from least to greatest. That is a key step when you're finding the mean. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So one, one, two, then five, then six. Now, I'm using my number line, I can also plot them so that I can see the data values. So I'll just use a dot here. All right, and that's kind of how our data would be spread out on a number line. And then I've shown you this strategy before to find the median is crossing off from the smallest and the largest from the beginning and the end of your list until you come to the middle. And the number in the middle is two. All right, so our median is two. Now, so to remember the, what median is, I always use the example of a highway and the median that runs down the middle of the highway. So finding the middle when you are finding the median. All right, do that first by putting your data values in order and then finding the middle by working from the outside in. All right, and you can do that on a number line like this too. So crossing off like this, all right, and then you're left with two here. Okay, so now for the mode, I always use the example of thinking of mode means most, using that M-O at the beginning of the words to remind you. So which data value shows up the most? So in this case, uh, there's only one, six, one, five, one, two, and then there's two ones. So our mode of the data is one. The one shows up the most. All right, so that's a little bit of review for you. I'm sure you remember from previous years doing some of this. Now, what I would like to do um, before I let you go today, I am going to go over a little bit of some complicated math that's coming up for you tomorrow when, you're, when you uh, start investigating the mean, median, mode a little bit more. Okay, so for example, there will be a question where you are going to have to do some long division and get a decimal answer. So remember when we're finding mean, median, and mode, you shouldn't have a remainder. So I showed you how to do that by extending the number into the decimal places and creating zeros at the end to work with. So I'm actually going to go over your question with you and make sure that you understand how to do that again. So you will be doing this division tomorrow in your book. 643 divided by 8. All right, so we can't share into the 6, but we can with the 64, and that's 8 times to share 64 with a remainder of 0, but we still got this 3, this 3 in the 1, so we have to share these 3 ones. We can see that that is not big enough, and like I said, we don't want a remainder, so we can't share there, and we are going to head into the decimal places. All right, so we're adding a zero, bringing it down. Now we're sharing 38 groups. We know we can go three times for 24. Do a bit of division, uh, do a bit of subtraction. And now we've got a remainder of six. Again, we don't want that remainder of six. So we're going to go another decimal place. We're gonna add another zero. Okay, bring that down. So 60 now, eight groups, sharing 60 into eight. That would be seven times for 56. 
we've got again a remainder of four. So once again, we have to go another decimal place now. So we're going to add another zero here. Okay, and that's going to become 40. And now this looks a little bit hopeful. 40 divided by eight, that's five. And I finally got my remainder of zero. Okay, so this is one of the questions you're going to have to find the mean for, you're going to have to do the division for. And so the answer, the mean for this question is 80.375. All right, so I've walked you through that now. So remember that you've seen how to do this when you uh, are working away tomorrow on that question. All right, another tricky one that I'll show you a strategy for doing is number five on page 154. Again, that's tomorrow. So it's giving you some data values. So two, 19, seven, four, 15. And then it says one of the data values is missing. All right, but it tells you that the mean is 10. All right, so we have to work backwards a little bit here. The mean is 10. So remember that to find the mean, we have the sum of the data values here and then the number of data values here. Okay, so I'm gonna start filling it in backwards a little bit. So the mean is 10, they've told us that. I don't know what the sum is because I don't know that value yet, but I do know how many data values there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, and then with that one, there's six. So now I just have to use a little bit of mental math here, maybe some fact families to help me out. What number divided by six gives me 10? Well, knowing my fact family, doing it backwards a bit, using a bit of algebra, 10 times six is 60. So that sum is 60. 60 divided by six equals 10. So if it told me that the mean is 10, okay, and that all of these together add up to 60, so in other words, now it'll tell you to use x to represent that one. So um, two plus 19 plus seven plus four plus 15 plus x equals, and then the sum is 60. All right, so what we want to do is we want to add this all up together. We don't know the value of x, but we can go ahead and add all this together. And I would recommend doing it in a tower, maybe from least to greatest, to try and make sure that we are getting the right numbers here. 9 plus 5 is 14, plus another 7 is 21, plus another 4 is 25, plus another 2 is 27. So I'm going to carry that, those two tens. And then I have 2 plus two here is 47. So this much here is equal to 47. So what I want to do then is use 47 plus x equals 60. And then this should remind you a bit of algebra. Now I want to use a fact family or get rid of that 47. So um, you're going to end up doing, knowing that to find x, you'll have to take away the 47 from the 60. Okay, and again, I would recommend working in standard algorithm for this kind of thing. 10 take away 7 is 3. 5 take away 4 is 1, which means x is equal to 13. All right, so I just wanted to walk you through that when you're finding a missing number in a set of data, and you, but you know some information like the mean. You can kind of work your way backwards, use a little bit of algebra, uh, and fact families and try and figure out x from there. So I, I wanted to walk you through those as you start doing some more complicated math. So you can re-watch this video tomorrow uh, as you're doing it if you like. And I hope that you uh, have a good time trying to figure out all of this and it's not too complicated for you, but let me know if you need me to walk you through anything and I'm happy to do that.